No learn to row plan would be complete without a discussion on how to use the force curve uh, on the PM monitor of the Concept2. Uh, so in order to access this uh, graph, uh, force curve, uh, you're going to hit, you know, start rowing, go on just row or something like that, or start your workout. You're going to hit the display button at the bottom until you see this uh, pair of axes with uh, an N and pounds of force. Uh, on the left hand side. So that's how you access the graph on the force curve. And then once you start rowing, you're going to start to see uh, a force curve being generated each time that you take a stroke. And so at the beginning of the force curve uh, is the beginning of the stroke, and then the end of the force curve is the end of the stroke. And essentially, you're going to get one of these force curves every single stroke. And the graph will give you a visual representation of how you're applying force during the stroke. So there's various things we look for when we are evaluating force application on the machine. And this gives you a window into whether or not your stroke is being effective or not. It does not directly instruct you how to row on the machine, but when you start to get things right in terms of connection and drive uh, coordination and sequencing, uh, the curve takes on a certain shape uh, that, that then is displayed. And so therefore it's a confirmation that you're actually doing the right things on the machine. So from a theoretical point of view, um, the force curve is uh, very very much based in physics um, it, it has on the y-axis it has force uh, in newtons and on the x-axis it has time so as i mentioned before this is your catch this is the end of the stroke and so <clears throat> essentially what we've got here is a graph of impulse because uh, impulse is force multiplied by time. So essentially what we've got here is that the area under the under the curve is the amount of impulse uh, that is imparted to the machine uh, over the course of the stroke. And ideally what we're looking for is a curve that is is really is really nice and convex all the way around and it essentially is very smooth and it doesn't have uh, any any kind of concavities as we go around. So what we're looking for here is a smooth force curve, and the way the way to generate that uh, is you know to to be as continuous with the acceleration of the oar handle as possible. When things break down in your stroke, then you start to get uh, some dents in this curve, and that gives you a clue as to where things. Uh, can be improved and things uh, are breaking down. So looking at this curve, essentially, uh, it is essentially about as close to a parabola as I could draw with this program. Uh, and this this is indicative uh, of a stroke uh, that basically starts with, uh, you know, at that beginning of the drive, that, that first inch uh, is nice and patient. Um, it is sharp, it is not so soft by any stretch, but we're not trying to kill it in the first half of the stroke on the leg drive. And what you get is a fairly even curve uh, all the way around. Uh, this, is kind of a, this is kind of a surging stroke, so a hard beginning, but a surge all the way through, an acceleration all the way through the stroke. And that's what's gonna result uh, in a curve that looks uh, very close to what one might describe as a parabola. On the other end of things, uh, you could you could be approaching your force application uh, with a very front-loaded drive, which has a very explosive uh, start to the stroke. And, and so what you see here is that, uh, whereas on the slide before, we had sort of a very even parabola, now what we've got uh, is we've got a curve that sort of shifts a little bit to the left in terms of the peak force, uh, and you know in terms of you know where 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 in the stroke 
are we hitting uh, our maximal force application? And that is, that is generally what you're gonna see somewhere between 30 to 40% of the stroke uh, is when you're gonna hit that uh, peak force. And what you get is a very front-loaded uh, application of force, uh, but because you have applied force um, in, a very, in a very explosive manner at the front end, what typically tends to happen is the force curve tends to be uh, a little flat and sort of triangular, if you like, um, in, in, in its look because, because you've put so much force in the, front, the first part of the drive, um, it's very hard for the back and the arms to continue to, to, to continue that acceleration. And so as a result, you get uh, a force curve that, that uh, you know, potentially just leans left. But again, it, it, looks, it looks more rectangular um, than even than it was on the last slide. But I think, you know, I don't want to get particularly into the weeds on all these different things, but I just want to give you a general sense of how to look at that curve and how to analyze uh, what's going on with it uh, to tell, to give you a clue as to whether or not you're rowing effectively on the machine or not. So if we superimpose both of those force applications on the same graph, uh, you can see that there are, um, you know, some definite differences between the two. And I just thought I would show you this slide to give you a sense of, you know, what 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 a what a front loaded application might look like versus one that has a more sort of progressive acceleration to it. As you can see, uh, peak force is being met is being found uh, uh, earlier in the drive. Uh, and in the in the other type of force application, that hard that hard beginning, uh, not explosive, it's still hard and sharp beginning, but not trying to kill it in that first inch, and really make sure that you're progressively surging through that stroke all the way. Then you get uh, a little bit more uh, convex uh, here towards the uh, later part of the stroke. So. I think this is an interesting graph to give you a sense of you know where uh, where that comparison is. I would also like to say that it, it's really not a good idea necessarily to try to get the perfect curve every stroke. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of watching every single stroke. Um, I think in order to row an effective force curve, then yes, your biomechanics needs to be uh, intact. Um, but you should be focusing on the whole organic whole rather than trying to micromanage what you're doing with the legs and what you're doing with the back and what you're doing with the arms. Essentially, if you're applying force in a smooth, accelerated manner and being effective uh, at getting your body weight on the handle, um, you're going to get a nice, smooth uh, looking curve, which is a clue that uh, your 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 force application and your technical application and the way in which you're using your body and your body weight accelerating the oar handle is good. So on this slide is a little bit of an exaggeration, but this is an example of what happens when there's a breakdown uh, between you know some of the sequencing uh, in the drive. So essentially, you know, in the, in the other slide, you saw that sort of very smooth uh, convex curve all the way around. Well, on the flip side, if there's problems with uh, your biomechanics and your application, and something's breaking down with your technique, um, you're going to see this concavity happen in the force curve. And essentially what, what was happening here is that you're getting good acceleration here, then something technical breaks down, maybe something between maybe grabbing uh, the the handle with the arms, breaking the arms too early, and that causes uh, a, a, a slowing down of acceleration uh, or a deceleration relative to where we were at the point before. So we get a little bit of a concavity here, and then there's a recovery when connection is reestablished and the force becomes a little more continuous, and then it comes out of that concavity and so, you know, this is, this is an exaggeration. You probably wouldn't see one exactly like that. But what you're looking for when you look at that force curve is uh, where do the concavities occur? Um, you know, are you rowing a smooth curve? 
uh, you know, for example, um, an example of a two-part drive, which uh, would be ineffective as if your curve is doing something like this, and it has kind of two humps to it. Uh, to me, that says that, you know, there's a real disconnect between one section of your drive and another section of your drive. And we want to we want to be applying the power in a smooth, continuous fashion and not uh, just trying to, you know, for example, push the legs down and then your back is ineffective and then your arms catch up at the end. Like you might end up with a graph that looks a little bit like this if it's got two humps to it. Um, that's what's known as a two-part drive, and we really want a one-hole uh, force application during the drive and not two parts that get disjointed somewhere in that drive. So again, just trying to give you some thinking and some examples of what might happen with the force curve and what it means and giving you a sense of where to work on uh, that uh, application. So generally, you know, you've got the legs, you've got the back opening up at a certain point, you've got the arms, uh, you know, being being drawn into the body and the elbows break at a certain point. And um, really the skill is to try to get all of those parts to work together. Uh, you know, this, this uh, it's an organic whole, so you're activating muscle groups that are overlapping. Uh, there's, a, there's an artistry to this to make it work. Uh, and that will come over time as you row more strokes. But um, as you can see here, we're getting some concavities in these examples, and that gives you a clue that something's breaking down. Um, and so maybe you want to get a coach or somebody to look at that, look at your technique to decide, uh, you know, whether what what is breaking down and what's causing uh, this, uh, you know, unsmooth curve, if you like, a, a curve that collapses in on itself. Um, at certain points. So to illustrate that point, uh, I've overlaid the, the even force curve with the slide before. And you can see in the purple areas right here, uh, you can see that, you know, if this was the ideal force curve, uh, then you're going to be looking for, um, you're going to be looking to improve this area here and this area here, and that's that's your missed opportunity to, to impart impulse to the machine uh, or work on the machine. And um, I thought this slide was a pretty effective way of kind of showing you where the concavities uh, are, are, are showing you a, lo a loss in potential of what you should be ideally aiming to do. Um, and the same is for the front loaded drive as well. I just chose this this one. Uh, as an example, uh, because I think with the with the with the uh, more uh, even parabola uh, uh, looking curve, it's it's a little bit easier to see where where those um, where those uh, issues are with your drive and where where you could be l looking to improve potential for improving. I think is the best way to put that. So that completes this video uh, on force curves. Uh, hopefully it gives you a sense of what, what to look for, um, you know, what is an effective looking force curve. Again, I can't emphasize enough that, you know, by looking at this, looking at this force curve does not clue you in on how to row on the machine. But if you're following along with the drills uh, in a good, uh, you know, drills-based learning, learn to row program, uh, such as one you might be in right now. Um, when you do things right, you're going to get this smooth looking curve. Uh, we want to we want to try to get uh, also as much area under the curve as possible. And so you know it's it's not you know in terms of the shape of the curve, that's the qualitative aspect of it. You know the way and the manner in which you're applying force. And the area, uh, that area under the curve is is more of the quantitative aspect of it. So the way I describe it uh, to those that I work with is if you imagine that you have a can of paint with a certain amount of paint in it, um, that the amount of paint is uh, the amount of work that you do during a stroke on the machine. Uh, and the shape of the curve is how the brush works to apply that paint uh, on a wall 
uh, you know, so, you know, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely the, the intersection between the art of rowing and the science of rowing uh, that really helps uh, you row an effective force curve. So I hope the video has been helpful um, and um, it's not a real in-depth, uh, deeply scientific look, but I think it's enough to get you started on, you know, knowing what you're looking at uh, when you see that graph on the PM monitor uh, on your Concept2. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.